This episode of Sessler Something is brought to you by Audible. All right, everybody. Uh, I imagine some of you woke up to the same uh, learning about the revival of the Gears of War franchise as I did. I, I have to say, here's a fascinating coincidence. Uh, last week, I was doing a podcast. I was doing the Rebel FM podcast, and I'm walking from dinner with uh, Mitch Dyer over at IGN and Arthur Geese over at Polygon, and we had kind of talked about how it would probably be a good idea if Microsoft tried to buy back the IP from Epic, and we were like, I don't know if they would do that. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Whoops. Uh, yeah, we, we, as some of you said, I'll start talking about The Last Guardian and stuff like that and see if we can start a trend. Um, with that in mind, um, I'm, I'm, for the most part, I'm quite happy to see the revival and the continuation of the Gears of War franchise. I really, really like the games. Um, I know there were flaws there, but overall, I think their impact on gaming, uh, it really cannot be understated that the cover system, the use of the cover system, they didn't invent it, but they really turned it into uh, something that was so essential in in action games, uh, and especially in third-person action games, that it's something that we now expect to see. It, it's, its effect upon game design cannot be understated. Um, I liked it for other reasons as well. I like monsters. Um, I'll just say it. I'm still a five-year-old in my head when it comes to sort of the imagination of someone detailing things that are unpleasant, supposed to be scary. I just, I, 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 I love that part, and they really were kind of the best I got out of my need for monsters out of games in the last generation, so I'm happy to see what happens in the next generation. And you know, to be fair, the idea of continuing the Gears of War universe makes sense. Um, as someone who also does like Halo, oh my God, ah, he likes all these popular games. Um, one of the things that's really bogged down Halo is the opacity of its mythology and everything and the ability to try to tie it all together. I think sometimes it means when it moves forward, it has to move forward at such an epic level, there's an ironic word, um, that you know, it, 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 it can bog itself down. Gears, yes, it was also like, you know, people in the face of the apocalypse, but it had a kind of a nice, narrow logic to it. We have to survive. And, it, and the, the depths of the missos uh, really were kind of at the action movie level. And, you know, it, it's sometimes when you don't have as much, as I said earlier about my, in my Titanfall sets or something, um, you can get something that sometimes resonates a lot more because a lot of the audience can really kind of identify with some of the more human qualities of the storytelling, um, even if it involves giant worms. Um, having said that, uh, so I, I think that there's a lot to be excited about. Rod Ferguson is on board. He shepherded through uh, the Gears of War games. Uh, he, he really is uh, very talented. Getting Bioshock Infinite out the door was probably not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so this is all good. They're doing it at Black Test Studios, which is a newly acquired or created Microsoft studio. Um, these, this all sounds good. I'm looking forward to more Gears. I'm looking to see what happens with Gears, with new technology, both Unreal Engine 4 and, and on the Xbox. Box One. I think what some other people have remarked on is because it's going to Black Tusk and they are, you know, this new studio from Microsoft, uh, we saw a kind of a snippet of something that was kind of hard to parse at their press conference at E3 last year. It, it, what it did show is that they were investing in a new studio to work on a new IP. And from what I can tell from statements from Phil Spencer, they're probably not going forward with that new IP. They kind of walked back on how real or how particular that game was that they showed there. And while I'm happy that they're doing Gears, um, it is a little bit worrisome that, you know, when they're finally willing to kind of make their own games again, that was a huge problem for Microsoft during the tail end of the, of the 360, um, that they're not as willing to seem to invest in brand new IPs. And that's something that Sony does so well. Um, Sony really knows how to continue existing franchises, Uncharted, God of War, and then do things that are more experimental. Throw some stuff against the wall and see if it sticks. It's not always, you know, the most fiscally responsible way to go about it, but, you know, in a, in a creative environment like games or film or literature, uh, you have to take those chances because you just don't know when you're going to hit that zeitgeist the right time. And yes, it is nice and it's comforting. I had an interview with Phil, Phil Spencer last year that the reason that he is at sort of at the helm where he is at Microsoft is to get them to start making more games. But it's important that, yes, do what's going to help your bottom line. Do what's going to make the fans very happy. But you've got to take that risk. That's how you define your ethos as a game publisher, as a console manufacturer. What distinguishes you from the other guy is what that list of risk, of creativity that you're willing to invest in. That says the most about who you are. And right now, with Microsoft looking like they're playing it rather safe, not completely safe, but rather safe, you want to get that sense of that gusto, that excitement that makes you want to see really exciting creativity come from them.
All right, everyone, I want to take a second before the second half of the show and thank our sponsor, Audible. Audible has over 100,000 audiobooks and spoken word entertainment in every genre. They can be played back anywhere, anytime. And you can get a free audiobook when you go to audiblepodcast.com slash something. And best of all, every sign up helps support the show. All right, time for our question. Uh, here we go. This is from Eric. Did Broken Age help or hurt Kickstarter's image? Would you financially support another promising looking game from Double Fine via Kickstarter? Um, okay, so there's actually a couple of questions in there. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with like one first. Would I uh, help financially support a game? I have supported some games via Kickstarter. I think I've announced it once because uh, it was a game I was so interested in and wanted to see it finished. As a rule though, I really had some soul searching on whether or not I was going to do that. I don't like to talk about where I'm uh, interested in Kickstarters. I am, I, while I think there's many legitimate Kickstarters out there, it's such a crapshoot that I've had to kind of draw a line that I don't cover Kickstarters. I don't like to promote Kickstarters because it, I'm not in a position where I feel comfortable picking and choosing the ones that I think are of value or seem to be completely legitimate. And the only safe place to be is draw that line. Um, I will put it to you this way. Um, I will still be financing some Kickstarter programs down the line. I'm just going to pick the ones that I find are interesting. Now, did it help or hurt Kickstarter's image? Um, in the beginning, this definitely helped Kickstarter's image. This really was kind of the first instance of, oh my God. I was actually at uh, the, the DICE conference in uh, Las Vegas two years ago when um, all of a sudden all the money was coming in for Tim Schafer and Double Fine. It really was kind of this moment of uh, what is happening? That sense that we are changing the dynamic of how we can finance games, accountability to sort of the money men in the large publishers. There really was that sense of liberation. What followed in suit, um, I don't think, Double Fine, is their success I think helped set this forth was this deluge of opportunities. Some were great, some were questionable, some were just kind of head scratching. Um, it, it became so big, so fast, I think there was that, that question that the center can hold. How much of this is really going to pan out in a positive way? Do the people who are financing these Kickstarters truly understand that really there isn't true accountability to them, there's only kind of emotional accountability to the supporters, as we have seen with some, some more bogus instances out there. But I, I think in the long run, with all the problems, that this has been good for Kickstarter's image. Even the instance, as even happened with, with Double Fine and Broken Age, of uh, getting way more than what you had set out for, and then still needing more money down the line, that I'm really, I was a little bit more chastising about this last year when it happened, but having played the first um, chapter of Broken Age and really enjoying it, looking at the remarkable success of Ryan Payton's Republic, um, and you know, very excited for sort of Brian Fargo's project down there in the future, um, that these are some growing pains. This really is pretty uncharted territory. And now that we're starting to see more and more of these high profile projects coming out, and they are good games, and it looks like the money went to good use, I can feel myself becoming a little more comfortable with it. And that, you know, we probably still have a little bit more time to get the kinks worked out, but that both the developers, the people who are supporting them, are finding sort of a better relationship of how to eyeball the right projects, and how to plan out what you really can do with the money that's given. Um, I, I, I think it's an important counter conversation to the more traditional models of highly, of very, very, very expensive games that in many instances are making less and less interesting games because the financial risk is so great that it's really healthy that's happening out there. And I'm glad that Double Fine was one of the people right there at the Vanguard. And I, I think we're only gonna see better stuff further down the line.